tunnel. Thank you, brother, for taking us through that prayer. Well, we have stepped into the month of October, haven't we? Do you feel it a little bit? The, the cooler, refreshing air, right? Even it's burning a little bit, right? My, my wife had a conversation with a friend this week and said, is this a little bit of what fall feels like? She said, well, yeah, yeah, a little bit. To which Joanne said, yes, yes, this is good. We moved here in the summer. It didn't feel like it does right now, and we hear it's only going to get better. So October, this is good that we've stepped into this month. Can you say it with me? A yes, like yes, yes, yes. 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 that's good. It's good that we've stepped into the month of October. And there's a lot of good things that we can associate with this month of October. The cool weather, amen and amen, is one of them. We, we lift that prayer up to you, Lord. Bring the fall, bring the cooler weather. Uh, another one is... Pumpkins! Pumpkins. Y'all got pumpkins around here? Yes? Good. Good, right? Because with pumpkins, then what comes with that in association as well with October is warm pumpkin bread. Right? Oh my goodness. Good pumpkin bread. And pumpkin pie! And, and pumpkin rolls! And I had this like Swiss pumpkin roll earlier this week. It was fantastic! And, uh, and pumpkin seeds. Is anybody here like pumpkin seeds? Oh, sure. Yes, that's good. So can we say yes to the pumpkin rolls and pumpkin pie and the pumpkin seeds? Go ahead, up. one, two, three. Yes! Yes, it's good. And, and who could forget as well that around this time there's corn mazes and hay rides and candy apples. Do you have candy apples around here? Yes. Yes! Yes, yes. yes. good. They're really good in the Northwest. We got fresh apples there. And, and hot apple cider. If you got candy apples, you probably got apple cider too. Not that we want anything hot, because we just got out of hot. <laughs> so maybe not that one. And, and surely even with our Carolina ghost peppers, is that what they were called, right? The, Ca the Carolina Reapers. The Reapers, right? But we had chili. Chili can be associated with the month of October. And chili was good. How can we forget that last week? So say that with me on three. One, two, three. Yes. Yes. That's good. It's good. Right? But, but let me say to you here for a moment, at least from, from the context of my own life, while others may say, well, no, I, I enjoy this about October too. The one of the things that, that personally I struggle with enjoying in October are, are masks. Masks. When people put these on, you know, and, 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 and there's, a, there's a reason why, okay, I grew up with three brothers, three brothers, okay, now imagine three brothers that live a life of looking to startle and terrify and scare, especially with the younger middle brother who gets scared somewhat easily at his young eight-year-old age. Masks was something that I did not enjoy when I was a young boy. And not even just so much because my, my brothers would try and scare me with their masks. There was one memory in particular where an uncle, I'm not going to name him for his sake, he, he calls me upstairs to my grandparents' uh, house. In their upstairs area, there's, cluttered, there's a lot of cluttered stuff up there, but cool in a cool way when we played hide and go seek games all the time. But my uncle calls me up and says, Joshua! And this is right around October time when people are putting on masks and enjoying scary little helpless children. <laughs> and I'm so walking up, I hear my uncle call me, walking up a narrow stairway. You know, it was one of those scary narrow stairways you go up as a kid, you know what I'm talking about, right? And I get up towards the top and say, oh, I know my uncle called me at like eight years old at the time. I know he called me, where, where is my uncle? And he jumps out from a, behind a door, <laughs> wearing this terrifying, hairy werewolf mask. He had the mitts on too, so he legitimately looked like one. And he knew I had just seen a movie that had a werewolf in it. I about fell down the stairs and broke my neck. It was not good. So masks, can I just be honest and real and transparent for a moment and say, I don't like them. I don't like masks. I don't enjoy them at all. So, 
and I can tell you as well though, because I, I, I appreciate this as I get older, as I think about it and get real about it, and, and you know, this idea of masks, that while well, people wear them for fun and to scare and other such, you know, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't like masks, but there's somebody who I know shares this not liking masks with me and doesn't like them even more so than I. And it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Can, can I tell you today that, I mean, the, the, the Lord, he, he hates masks. And let me, let me, you know, say with that, that he doesn't hate masks because they're scary. They don't scare him. Masks don't scare the Lord uh, as they would you and I. No, God has what one could, could say and could call a holy hatred towards masks. And allow me to clarify that to help make sense of it, that, that the Lord wants you to let him know all of you. Let me say that again. The Lord wants you to let him know all of you. Spoiler alert, he already does. He already does know you. But you know what I'm saying, right? Right? We, we in our humanity, in our insecurities, in our weaknesses, in our failures, we can seek to cover up, to conceal all of our inadequacies and our, our moral shortcomings before Him, which thus keeps all of us from all of Him. Doesn't it? I mean, doesn't it? And God, He hates that. He hates that because of His love for you, because of His love for us. A, a mask, and make no mistake, we wear them time and time before the Lord. It, it, it's a thing which, which, again, keeps us from God, keeps us from honesty, keeps us from transparency before Him keeps us from loving Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The, the first and greatest of all the commandments, which, which is foundational to being able to fulfill all the other commandments. And, and masks can not only keep us from God, they can also tear us away from God, who created us. In, 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 in the authenticity of, of who he designed us to be before him. And even in that, this connection of who he created us to be in him. That when we have a mask upon our faces, what, what ultimately is happening there is we're saying, God, I can't, I can't wear my face before you. I can't be real. I can't be genuine. And there is, there is a separation in that in our lives. You know, and, and, there, and it's not good. It's not good. And that's why God, that's one of the reasons he hates it. Because it's not good. It's not good for, or for us between him, him between us. It's not good for our lives. But there are, there, there are people who wear masks and they legitimately think that it's actually good for their lives. I, I want to read a few quotes here. Uh, from some writers who wrote about masks and what they believe for themselves, what masks can do for them. One individual named Christopher Barzak said, nothing is more real than the masks we make to show each other who we are. Nothing is more real than the masks we make to show each other who we are. Well, let me tell you, that, that's a lie from hell. That's a lie from hell. I mean, if you, want, if you want truth, right, and you want connection, true connection, you got to be willing to show your heart, willing to show who you truly are, so that it can be revealed and known, and a, a true intimacy, not a false intimacy, can be shared. You know, another individual named Sam Shepard wrote, I, I, I believe in my mask. The man I made up is me. I believe in my dance and my destiny. 
You know, did you notice one of the key words that quote? <laughs> Mine. It belongs to me. This is what I've chosen to do with my life. And so you can see that there's a clear, and it's doing damage to this man's life because he says, I don't want my life to be for me, to be, to be lived the way I want. I'll put on whatever mask feels right, whatever seems right in the moment, to be the man that I want for my own destiny. And all the while, God's heart cry to such a man would be, oh, there's such a better life. There's such a better life than the one uh, that, that, that you would call destiny, or that there are even times being real with one another as individuals that we could say, this is what I'd rather my life and my destiny look like. So is there a mask I need to put on in order to get towards that? And God is saying, why would you want that? It's false. It's not even real. Why? And, and, the, and the, the destruction is, is welcomed in. And the carnage upon our personality and upon our heart and who God made us to be. God hates that. God hates that. You know, here's one more. Uh, this was written by a woman named Catherine Doyle in a book called Vendetta. And she wrote this dialogue between <laughs> two characters. And she, she says to, to, to Valentino, asking a question, do, do you think you wear a mask? And he said, I'm wearing one right now. He smiled softly at her as he said, we both are. We both are. Yes, he said, but sometimes I wonder about the alternative. Imagine if we had no secrets, no respite from the truth. What if everything was laid bare the moment we introduced ourselves? Wonder, wonder we can. And to this, I believe from the Lord's heart and knowing Him, God would answer such a question unquestionably. And with the fullness of all that He is, He would say, Yes, yes, lay yourself before me. Even in the moment, you would be introduced to me. You see, if we would, in that moment of life, we, if we could do such a thing, we will have found our most awesome moment of all moments ever found. <coughs> Lay before Him, fully transparent, and, and saying, and surrender God, see me, see me, and know me. Can I, can I remind us today here as well that our God is a God whom we can trust? Amen. As we're talking about masks, we can ask the question, why is it hard to take off the mask even before the Lord? Well, it's because many of us, all of us, in some form or fashion, we, we've been hurt. We've been hurt. You see, but God invites us into His grace. How great His grace to say, take off the mask. Lay yourself before me. Find peace in who I've made you to be. In my, in my love for you and in my mercy and in my goodness towards you. Because it can, it can be so scary to take off the mask because for, for us, many of us in here, perhaps all of us, there's been times we've taken off the mask in front of individuals. And it's hurt. There wasn't any good about it. Rather than love, there was hate. Rather than you know, a, a, a sense of understanding, there was pure judgment. Rather than truth even, there were, there were lies. But I want to, again, remind you, God is a God whom we can trust. Amen. One in whom we can take off the mask without any reservation, without any fear. For He is good. He is merciful. He is loving. And His great desire is to love us and to love us without our mask. I mean, we, we might as well at one point or another anyways. Because, you know what? One day, we're going to come before Him, and we already are in many ways, naked before Him. Everything that we think He doesn't see, He already sees it. He sees it. You know? And, but we, and we well, I, I feel i got to go back to this, okay? In this, this masking of and 
Oh man, St getting away from the Lord. Why are, what are some of the reasons that we can put on the mask? Self-protection. Self-protection, right? Or even coming out of a spirit of perfectionism, a spirit of pride, a spirit of holy enough, all the while knowing we, we have no holiness unto ourselves. That's what I had to come back to. That's important that we hear that. Why do we wear a mask? Well, because we want to look a little holier than we actually are. Oh my goodness, we, we don't have any holiness at all. When we get to the truth of what the scripture teaches and the knowledge of knowing who we are in our fallenness, we have no holiness. We have no holiness of ourselves. It only comes of God being covered by His blood and His Spirit moving us in to in, in sanctification and living unto Him. Had to go back to that. I couldn't I couldn't pass that up. Too important. Well, and someday we are going to get naked before the Lord, totally and completely. And there's scriptures that back this up, of this un unmasking, you know, there's no, there's never going to be a hiddenness. Not there. Job said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has ta taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Job 1.21. And, and from Paul, he also says this. He says, for well, we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. Nothing. I mean, totally naked. I'm sorry if that makes you feel uncomfortable. It makes me feel a little uncomfortable. A little weird. I've worn clothes most of my life. Someday I'm going to be totally unclothed before the Lord in His presence. It's a little scary <coughs> A little scary to just be a uh, Lord, you know, you know. You know, in Hebrews as well, the, the writer in Hebrews says, There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. But we can never forget this. We can never forget this. God wants us to come to him openly and fully humble of which that word humble at its root even means humiliated humiliated it, it, is that okay to, to, to have a willingness even to be humiliated before the Lord and humbleness we ought to be I mean he set the example did he not it was unto his humiliation that he bore our sins upon the cross, even in pretty much nakedness, before all the world, to, to forgive all the world of its sin. He did it. He had a willingness to be humble and to and to be naked, willing to be, you know, and, and but for us, you know? So that's a hard question to, to answer because we know we have so many imperfections. And so many things that are wrong with us that, that we, even while we know God knows about them, we're not fully revealing them to Him. We think we're hiding them when they cannot even be hidden. And God calls out to us and just saying, you, 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 you wear a mask, but you, it, there isn't one there through my eyes. You, you, you think you are. So let's just get real already as real is. And it's awesome the Lord who calls out to that and saying to us, take off the mask, come before me, come before me totally and completely. You know, what, what did he say in Revelation? And this, this is the scripture that, you know, opens up in speaking to salvation, but it also speaks of our Lord's openness and welcome into our own life. It says, behold, I, Jesus, stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him, and he with me. Also in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. You see, these verses, they declare 
They proclaim a spirit of fellowship from our Lord. Yes. And not just in part, but in full. Right? Let, let me in, they say to you. Let me dine with you. Humble yourself. Show me all of you. Your anxieties, your fears, your failures. For I care for you. I want to lift up your, your life in truth. In truth. I mean, that's what we heard in those quotes we read earlier. I mean, those people, they were, li they were living a life. But I'll tell you, it was, it, 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 it was nothing but death because it wasn't genuine, it wasn't real, it wasn't connected to the life, the source of all life. We've got to get connected to Him, you know, because otherwise we're, we're just going to live into death and deception. Death and deception from ourselves, death and deception from our enemy who roars about like a lion seeking whom he may devour. He'll eat you with your mask. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Yes. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he will, we're told, he will lift you up. James 4, 8 through 10. This is God's promise to us if we would come before him maskless. Maskless. If we would take off our mask. He knows us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Better than any other could ever know us. And i got to tell you here real quick in, in the development of the sermon and getting ready for it, I, the whole time as I've been, I've been writing and preparing, I've been trying to get to the Pharisees. Because we're going to go into them later in these weeks and, and talk about some of the masks that they struggled with that we can apply to our own lives and say, oh, okay, that's a dangerous mask. i got to stay away from that. Help me, Lord, to not put on the same kind of mask. I'm like, Lord, I'm, I'm trying. I wanted to get even to the Pharisees this week. He said to me, I like, kid you not, like in a whisper as I was having this conversation with him and trying to be directed by him. And so he said, Josh, forget about the Pharisees. <laughs> forget about the Pharisees, Josh. Let's talk about your mask. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about we, the, the, my people, you know, and, and the people who are, who are wearing the mask who are too afraid to take it off. And, and it was funny that I was like, at that point I had to stand up. You know, because in sermon preparation, you get to a point where it's like, well, I was trying to go one direction, Lord, and you just won't let me go. And he's like, no, I won't. And then I have to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because we want to hear your voice. We want to hear what you have to say to us and what you mean to have your truth spoken. So I get up out of my computer chair, and I start walking around, and many times Joanne and I were talking about the sermon together, and she, so she knew what I was, you know, uh, preparing for throughout the week. And, and she asks me a great question as I'm walking around and, and seeking the Lord. She, she asks me, she says, Josh, what, what is your mask? What is your mask? I had to really stop and really think about it. I mean, and really think about it. What is my mask? Because look, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you guys I don't wear one. At, at least from time to time, I'm wearing it just be, because it's in our humanness. It's in our, it is. And can we just be real and be honest before one another that sometimes, sometimes we just put on a, a blasted mask and it doesn't do any good. You know, and she asked me another question with that too. And, and, and that she said, Josh, but what's, what's my mask? What's my mask? And we, you know, we had a great conversation out of that because it was a great question and a, an important question. One, one that we should all ask. But here's one of the things about this, is, is as I was processing and, and wondering, okay, what is my mask? And even Joanne asked, what's my, when she says, what's my mask? I had to be honest with her. I said, I don't know. I don't know. Especially when you try and ident identify just one major mask of all other masks, <laughs> of the many masks that we wear. <laughs> right? It, 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 
There's just some things that are it, it, almost an impossible question to answer for some individuals because sometimes they don't even know themselves that they're wearing a mask. I just step into this, the Pharisees, right? Did the Pharisees know they were wearing a mask? They had no idea. But Jesus time and again said, you're, wear you're wearing a mask of religion. You're masquerading as men of God, but you're denying him because you deny me. They couldn't see it. These, ma these men who were masters of religion couldn't even see their own mask. And you also have other examples of, of Pharaoh in the days of Egypt. He seriously thought, legitimately, and it's historically understood, that he thought he was God, divine, at least a God, Ra, God of the sun, and having connections to that. He had a mask on, and it caused him to say, who is this God that I would, you know, answer his requests? Let him show up. Oh my goodness, he did. He did, to Pharaoh's detriment and all the other people in the land of Egypt. And let me just say that, that that's the kind of damage that masks can do. That's the kind of damage they can do. You know, but, but unknowingly wearing masks of spirituality or religion, you know, in, in front of him, you know, in front, in front of God, in front of others, trying to make ourselves something we're not. You know, it, and again, so some wear masks without even knowing it, and some of those people sometimes can even be us. We can. Wearing a mask before the Lord. The Lord. And, and it's here, as we prepare to conclude, that I'd like to share with you something that I gained out of my Principles of Spiritual Formation class, because there is that question. The mask! The mask, what is it? How can I take something up that I don't even know was there? Right? Because that should be the prayers we're hearing these words from the Lord today of if I have a mask, I want to take it off. But what do I do if I don't even know that I am wearing one? What do I do? And it was under the instruction of a, a woman of faith, who I, I affectionately refer to very much as a grandmother as I was going through seminary. Her name was Valerie Clemen. And in the fall of 2013, uh, in, in, again, spiritual formations, she introduced I and uh, a number of my other classmates to something called the Jahari Window. The Jahari window. And just to give you a quick historical you know, background understanding where this came from, the Jahari window was created in 1955 by Joseph Loved, Joe, okay, and Harry Ingram, Harry, or Hari in this case, making the Jahari window. It was made for the purpose of increasing self-awareness. And Becky, you can go ahead and bring this up now if you like. It was made for the purpose of increasing self-awareness, which could allow an individual to discover their strengths, discover their weaknesses, blind spots, in the hopes of making improvements in their life, seeing where they might have things that are unknown of. And so let me give you a quick explanation of this Jafari window. First, but just look with me at the upper left quadrant there, which is known as the open quadrant. Um, so this is the quadrant which basically says it's known to me and, and it's known to others. You know, my, my personality types, you know, who I am as an, as an individual. Uh, for, for instance, if Ella was here, Ella Parrish, I didn't see her. There's Ella! Ah, you have to raise your hand, right? I'll tell you, Ella, like, we got to sit down, we had a great conversation with each other, and, and you know, as we had this open conversation, I'll tell you, she, she was full of joy, you know, and love. And I'll tell you, I walked out of there, and there, there, wasn't, there was no mask, there's, there's no mask whatsoever in her personality, and I can look upon that and say, my goodness, the joy of this lady, that is open to her. She knows she's got joy, and, and she knows that she brings joy to others, and I can see that joy. Yeah, that's good. That's good, right? And so you identify, you recognize that strength, and even a, a gift, the joy is a gift given to us by the Spirit. And Ella, you got it. So let that light shine, let the joy shine, and, and to oh, commending all of you, that God has given you a gift, an open gift, for the world to see it, and to enjoy it, and to bless others through it. So, so this open quadrant, known to self, known to others. So that's, that's the open quadrant on the upper left. Next, I want you to go to the lower left quadrant. This is known as the, the hidden one. Known, known to me, known to me, but not unknown to others. 
And so some have also called this the facade quadrant, you know, which is much of what we've talked to today, even before the Lord, where it's like, I, I want to put on a mask, you know, and so as to hide some things. I know they're there, but I don't want you to know they're there, or even if you know they're there, I don't want to talk about them, because they are there. Uh, let's go on about our day. Yeah? Right? Yeah? Yes? Yes. Uh, our third quadrant, um, which is the blind quadrant, it's unknown to me and known to others. This is a very interesting quadrant, I think. Where I, and, and this is the one where uh, enjoying a nice conversation, where it gets into a place of, do you see a mask I'm wearing that I don't even know about, uh, that uh, would be good for me to know about? And, and there are those things where there's an awareness. And, and for some of you who have a gift of discernment from the Lord, who may be able to see masks that others may be totally blind to. Uh, so that's that quadrant. But here's the one that I really want us to focus on this morning that, that connects to our sermon. That fourth quadrant is the quadrant that is unknown to self and unknown to others. Uh, the, qua the quadrant usually referred to, again, as you're seeing up there, as the unknown quadrant. And to this quadrant, you want to say, well, then what do you do? Nobody knows about it. I don't know about it. They don't know about it. Yeah. You know? I don't know. It's not this fourth quadrant in focusing and connection again. That it, it, it steps into the wonder. It steps into the, the hiddenness of our eyes, of things which no man can know, not at least on a, even at a conscious level. And there are some things to which we should say, hallelujah, thank God that we have a God such as this, who says, oh, okay, nobody knows, but I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know who I created you to be. I know the masks you're wearing. I know the reasons that you wear them. I know what it would mean for your lives if you could take all of your masks off before me. And that's, that, that's, that's the foundation here this morning that we're speaking to, to, brothers and sisters, taking off the mask before him. And therefore, getting his help to know what our mask may be before him so that we may live a total and complete whole fullness of life to him with no mask whatsoever. In regard to wearing the mask, becoming real and genuine before the Lord in our faith, taking off our own mask, taking it off. Only, and I want you to hold on to this truth, okay, and proclaiming it again. Only God knows you for all that you are. Yes, sir. Only God alone. Only God can reveal to you, bring you the knowledge and knowing all he wants you to be, drawing you away from the masks we can all be drawn to and drawn into his presence instead. There's a, there's a psalmist even in a scripture that connects with this window that we're looking at right now. And this is something that, again, I'm hold on to this. The psalmist writes, and it's, it's one that we should proclaim ourselves before the Lord too. Search me, O God, and know my heart. <coughs> Try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. You search me, God. You know, how, and, and, and to that we should say, if he, when he speaks into us, when we seek him and ask him, Lord, reveal something to me, that we stop to listen to him, Listen for him and listen to him. And, and say, how precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Help me to get into 